Hype TV people! Oh yeah, I'm back! So, this video is explaining to you how we in the building trade fit a steel. So this, 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 this method applies to a straight beam, an I-beam, or a crank steel, or any sorts of stuff. The principle is the same. I'm going to show you how we've done one, and I've got an example here like Blue Peter on the side that I'm going to show you in a minute. So I'm going to tell you how you fit the steel, the method that we do it, and the reasons as to why. And this particular video as well is also, this is a cranked steel. So this is the, the benefits and the beauty of using a cranked steel. So a cranked steel is this big grey beam here behind me. So tickling stick out, folks. And as you can see, it goes up, follows the roof line comes across and then goes down a little bit like a bridge and it goes onto there. So now I'm gonna to explain to you the benefits of it. So the main benefit for this is, as you can see these timber trusses behind me, so where my finger's going across there and up, these are called king trusses. And these are obviously the old way that the, the old joiners used to do and this is a very, very old building this is. And I'll just show you now if I spin round. One of you above me head. There, there and there. So these are really, really nice feature that I'm trying to keep. So this is actually a commercial conversion that we're actually going to be turning into four individual flats. And again, going back to the crank steel, it's cranked because it's not straight. So because it's been built, going up there, following the pitch of the roof, across and then coming down, uh, that's what we call a crank. So it's got, it's got a bend in it basically. So it's been, it's been fabricated, cut and welded on these joints and it's been designed to, to fit the camber of the roof, the pitch of the roof. So you can see it literally goes up right in line with the roof and it's been designed so that we can remove a wall. And so behind me, there was a wall. So the wall was taking the weight of these, pur these purlins. So these timber purlins here, they go on top. They go on top of here. So as you can see, it runs all the way through there. Can you see it there just above my finger? It's lots and lots of pieces of timber that go across. And on, above there, it's holding all the way to the roof. So the rafters come down on top of here. And then on top of there, you've got the, above that, you've got the battens going across and the tiles. There's a lot of weight above us. So I'm six foot five. And you can see that if I went, to, if, when we've removed this, this um, wall behind me, if you look at the height of that, so that's where the wall plate is. If we'd have put a straight piece of steel in and follow my finger and go all the way across there, then obviously when I walk, I'm going to bang my head on it. And because it's a conversion, we don't want that. Because one, it looks ugly. Two, it's a pain in the bum. And three, building regs don't like it. <coughs> so, going back to this. So what we've done is we've had it done, built like this, so that it gives us the head height. So obviously I can walk right underneath it now. No problem at all. Look how far away it is from my head. You know, I can't even, I can't even touch it. So I've gained the head space. I also think it looks quite a cool feature. And this is the method that we've done. So what we've had to do, is I'll, here's one I prepared earlier, what the lads have done. So as you can tell by the, anybody in the trade, you can tell by the mortar that obviously the, the, it's quietly freshly laid. So what we've actually done is bricked up all this here, and I'll, I'm just gonna go on and tell you the method that we've done it. So we've had to create what's called a pier. So the pier is, is this, this, this brickwork that goes across there, and as you can see in this building, they're underneath all these oak beams to the there. So we've done the same principle here, we've done some brickwork. So what we actually do is we drill into the brick, into the existing, into this wall here, and we put what's called starter ties. So starter ties, starter tie, and there's the installation on the back. So if you can figure out, you drill, where my finger is, you drill into the brickwork and then bend it down. And as you're putting your brickwork to the side, it goes in between the joints. So which means there'll be a starter tie drilled into here and then it'll come out and it'll sit, sit out the brickwork where my finger is and it'll sit into this mortar joint. So that that means it's tied that, that brickwork into there. So it's all become one big unit. Now this goes all the way up, tickle, tickle, tickle. And it comes onto the top. So again, when I started this video, I was going to show you the method and what we do. 
So this, this applies to a straight steel or a crank steel or whatever else, whatever you're doing, is it's going to need something to sit on. So that might be an existing wall, or you might have to create what we call a pier, which is some extra brickwork like that. So you drill into the wall, put your starter ties in, you do your brickwork up, and then on top, you've got a piece of concrete. Now the concrete's called a pad stone. And that is a piece, piece of manufactured concrete that's probably got fibres in it and it's got some sort of density in there. And the, the idea of this is it can take the they can take the weight of the steel and the steel's taking the weight of the weight, the, 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 get the words out. The steel is taking the weight of the roof. So there's lots of pressure now pushing down on top of this. So it's it's made and reinforced so that it doesn't crumble under the under the weight because obviously all that weight is down on that one point. So it's a small surface area going on one point. So that's got to be a really strong piece of masonry there. So like I say, that's called a pad stone. So that's to stop it from crumbling so that the steel doesn't make that crumble. That obviously goes down to the floor all the way down. So it's a structural piece of um, masonry. And then on top of that, you put the steel. So like I say, if it's a straight steel, it just goes straight the way across. Or if it's a crank steel, it goes up, but it, ultimately it's made. So this is a crank steel. And on top, it's literally made whereby, all right, not sure if you can see there. So can you see that there's a plate there? So it's actually made, a big flat plate is made to sit on top of this. So it's designed to sit on there, and then obviously it's been it's been designed and cut and then it goes up. So we've got a pier going all the way up, pad stone, the steel's got a flat plate there for it to sit on, so it's, it's nice and flat, so it becomes nice and stable. And then, as it goes up, bricks on the floor, as it goes up there, it comes across. Now you imagine that's a big, big piece of steel. It's gonna be way too big for us to just pick it up um, and to manoeuvre and get it inside the building. So obviously this is an existing building. So we've had it cut there. So if you can see where those bolts go through, that's what we call a splice. So what's very, very good with a lot of architects or stru structural engineers or whatever else, they're very good at doing a, a drawing and giving you calculations and telling you how big it is. Now, depending on the person, they're not all the same, but then they won't look at the logistics of how do you fit a piece of steel that's that big and goes all the way across and goes down, how do you get that through a front door to bring it inside here? So that's where we come in and that's where we'll ask them to, to do a splice. So we cut it in half, so we're only pulling, pulling half in. And then as we come in here, we can pull it together and then bolt it together so it becomes one. And obviously that's something that you need to tell your structural engineer. So there's another little builder's top tip for you. So don't struggle with a massive steel. You can actually have it cut in half and make the job half of the half the job. Half it! Half a job! Yeah, and that's how it is. So once we've done that, obviously these are all this is still relatively fresh, which is why we've got these acros in. So this acro here, which has gone down, so we've supported the floor there. Oh, there you go. We've got that on a brick. Underneath there, we've got another acro from the floor going up, so it's all supported. Now that's sitting underneath the purling there, so that's taking the weight. Of, of this particular one and then this one is sitting this acro is sitting underneath the steel and that's just purely for the fact that it's quite cold now and i'm worried that cement isn't going to go off that quick and i want to be i want to make sure that that's really 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 hard and solid before i release the weight on it because i don't want that to fall because obviously it's carrying the weight and something else that i've missed and it's just i've just made me realize is when we have got a crank steel is this has actually been designed so when it goes up it actually goes flat there at that point and goes across. The reason it's flat there is because that steel there is not just holding the bottom part, it's also holding this piece of timber. So it's designed to that point so we can pack underneath there so the timbers have got something flat to sit on. And that's the reason that it's been cramped. So it's not just for the head height, it's also to, to support that. So hopefully there's been lots of tips there and I've explained that thoroughly enough that people understand. So just to very, very quickly reclap, if you've got a piece of steel, you need to make sure it's got something to sit on. So if you either need to build a separate pier like this, or you can actually have that sitting on the existing wall if you've got space. In our case, we haven't. On top of the wall or the masonry, you'd have a pad stone, which is that bit of concrete there. That would either be inside the existing wall if that's where it was going, or it would go on top of your pier, as we've done. Then the steel sits on top of there, and that holds up whether it's a wall or whatever else in this case. So a piece of masonry, pad stone, piece of steel on top of it 
and then we're going to wait until that's gone nice and dry we'll wait till the cement changes color so we know it's really really gone off and then we'll take down these acros which are temporarily holding everything in place now just in case so that's the principle of it i hope this helps you get guys out <clears throat> and if it is that's great like share and subscribe ask any questions and if i've got time i'll come back to you and in the meantime folks i'll see you later Mwah!